English is a difficult language. We park our cars on a driveway, but we drive cars on a parkway. When you transport something by car, it's called a shipment. But when you transport something by ship, it's called cargo. Piano players are called pianists, but race car drivers aren't called racists. The most popular sport played in North America is football, but there is no ball, and they use their hands, not their feet. We cook bacon, but we bake cookies. We have an alphabet with 26 letters, and it's always recited in the same way. But is there any reason that the alphabet has to be in that specific order? It can get really, really confusing. Nouns are things, like literally. They're an object, like a table or a car. They're people, they're places. Verbs are words that are used to describe actions. The girl ran down the road. The guy jumped into the pool. But alas, English comes in and just screws this entire thing up. Some words are both nouns and verbs at the same time, and can be used in the same sentence. Sometimes, you can create entire drawn out sentences from a single word. The word police is an example. The police are, well, the police. Cops, you know. But police is also a verb, as in watching over or keeping an order. So, technically, police police, police police, police police, police police is a real sentence. So is buffalo buffalo, buffalo buffalo, buffalo buffalo, buffalo buffalo. I don't know. For some reason, we call it a building, even though it's already been built. Words like that and had can be used back to back in sentences and still end up making sense in the end. I don't think that that makes any sense at all, but yet we still do it almost every day and barely even notice it. Two students, James and John, were taking an English test and had been asked to describe a man who has suffered from a cold in the past. John writes, the man had a cold, while James writes, the man had had a cold. In the end, John's answer was marked incorrect, while James's was marked correct. So, to summarize, James, while John had had had, had 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 had, had 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 a better effect on the teacher. This is still the real sentence. It gets a lot easier to read when we add in punctuation and emphasis on some words, but still, just why? Some words are spelled the same and have multiple meanings, homonyms. Some of these can and can't rhyme at the same time. The word lead rhymes with read, but lead doesn't rhyme with red. Red rhymes with lead though. Did I just polish my car, or did I polish it? Using chemicals to remove the polish is pretty fine and standard, but use chemicals to remove the polish and you might be Hitler. Does this shampoo mean no tears or no tears? The word bow can mean many things, like a bow and arrow, or a bow as in the bow on a Christmas gift, or the bow of a ship, or you could bow in front of someone. Some words look like they should rhyme, but just don't. This is the word bomb. Change the B to a T, and now it's Tom. I mean, tomb. Okay, let's try again. Change the first letter to a C, and now it's comb, which doesn't rhyme with either bomb or tomb. Alright, that's fine. Just change the C to an H, and we have home. Wait, that's not how you spell it. There, better. But wait, change the H to an S, and it becomes sum which doesn't rhyme with home. This is why English is confusing, especially for those people who are learning English as a second language. Letters don't always make the same sounds. Phonetics is the study of the way that words and letters sound. But funny enough, the word phonetics isn't even spelled phonetically. X usually makes a x sound, like in the words apex, relax, and tax. But sometimes, when placed by other letters, just causes it to make a completely different sound. Xylophone and xenophobic are two examples where the sound just completely switches to a Z, so why don't we just use a Z instead of X? C sometimes sounds like K, like in cat and can, but C also sometimes sounds like S, like in cigar or scent. Quick side note, the letter W is kinda weird too. In most books and fonts and web pages, it looks more like a double V than a double U, but I guess it all depends on how you write it. The letters G and H and P and H, when put together, end up making an F sound. But even still, the ending O-U-G-H is one of the most confusing ones in the entire language. Take these words, cough, rough, bow, through, and though. All of these words end in O-U-G-H, but somehow none of them rhyme with each other, but pony and baloney do. 
It just doesn't make sense. You see this abomination of a word? Just take a guess on how to pronounce it. Since some of our letters make multiple sounds, and when put together with other letters sound like other letters, you can spell words in ways that they just shouldn't be. Use the GH sound in tough, the O sound from women, and the TI sound from nation, and you get the word fish. If you take the W in answer, the H in ghost, the extra A in aardvark, and the T in listen, you get the word what. Nobody would hear it though, because all of those letters are silent. One of the dumbest things about English is how we use silent letters. Letters that otherwise make a sound sometimes decide they just don't want to show up. This is a B. This is also a B. This is a very long Q. This is also a very long Q. This is a blue eye. So is this. The S in island, the P in psychology, the H in honest, the O in possum. What's even the point of silent letters? They're only good for tricking spelling bee contestants who are given words that they've literally never seen before or will ever use again. Believe it or not, every single letter in the English alphabet is silent sometimes. Sometimes we get lazy and we don't want to say multiple words. So instead, we use contractions. We put in an apostrophe and just completely get rid of half the letters in some words. I am going to has since turned into Ima. It's informal, but we cut out three spaces and 75% of the letters, and yet we still all understand it. Have not is shortened to haven't, did not turns into didn't, they are is shortened to there. But we have multiple theirs. There's there, there, and there. All of which are used in their own different situations, but we'll get there later. There's plenty of people who don't know what the difference between your and your is, but hopefully you're not one of them. We kind of took this too far though, and made triple contractions. We started slurring our words so badly that we ended up with things like Yaldov and Yudinov. But to be honest, sometimes these contractions don't even make much sense once you expand them. Take this question for example. Why won't she come to my birthday party? When you expand the contraction, it becomes, why will not she come to my birthday party? I just, I don't know. Some words have multiple meanings, which is fine. But what isn't fine is when they're completely opposite of each other. Contronyms. For example, off. Here, the light just got turned off, as in deactivated. But when my alarm goes off in the morning, it turns on, or is activated. The word screen is also a contronym. You can use a hat to screen your face from the sun, as in to conceal or protect it. But movie theaters tend to screen new movies when they come out, as in to show or display. Commas are also very important. They can be used to bridge two sentences into one, or separate items in a list. But there's a gray area here as to when you should or shouldn't use them. The Oxford comma is one of the most debated things in the English language. Simply put, it's the last comma used in a sentence with three or more items. But for some reason, a lot of people choose just not to use it. Most people don't even know that they're doing anything wrong. Here's an example. I love my parents, John and Lisa. This is a normal sentence, right? You can tell that there's at least three different people here and there's no confusion. Now, without the Oxford comma, I love my parents, John and Lisa. Here it gets kind of confusing. Are your parents' names John and Lisa, or are John and Lisa other people? It just causes unnecessary confusion, even for people who are native speakers. For people learning English as a second language, it makes things a thousand times more difficult because it's so inconsistent across the world. Some places use them, other places don't. The masculine pronouns in English are he, his, and him. So you might imagine that the feminine ones are she, shiz, and shim. But they aren't. Instead we change it to she, hers, and her. In English you might notice that we often change things up just for the sake of being difficult. Ananas. 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 Pineapple. But pineapples have no pine, nor are they an apple. Some numbers make sense, like 60, 70, and 80. But at the same time, we have numbers that don't make sense, like 20, 30, and 40, which don't match. We say in November, but we say on Friday. So yeah, it's pretty clear that English is broken. But you know, at the end of the day, it's what it's. Since there is no time like the present, I feel like now is the best time to present the present. The gift of knowledge. This video was sponsored by Brilliant. 
Brilliant is a problem-solving based website and app with a hands-on approach, with over 60 interactive courses in math, science, and computer science. There's a little something for everyone, and they make learning intriguing and straightforward. With interactive courses to get you involved with what you're learning, it's a very effective way to reinforce the concepts that you learn so you can apply them to other scenarios. Brilliant puzzles you, surprises you, and expands your understanding of the modern world. They help explain how some of the most advanced technology in the world works through logic and reasoning. If you're interested in learning more about math, science, and computer science, head to brilliant.org aperture for a free trial. The first 200 subscribers to check it out will get 20% off of a premium subscription and will allow you to take as many of Brilliant's courses as you'd like. You'll be supporting my channel and yourself at the same time.